All right, hey, we're here today again with Dr. Kaler. And today we're talking about relativism and the rejection of absolute truth. That is a mouthful. What are we talking about here? <laughs> well, Brian, you know, it seems to me that in the last 30, 40 years, I guess, no one really wants to accept the idea of absolute truth anymore. Hmm. That uh, they define truth as what's true for them or for someone else. Hmm. And therefore, um, there is no such thing as absolute truth. Everything is, quote, relative. So what's the problem with this? I hear this on the radio. I hear this in the news all the time. Is there, what's the fundamental problem with that whole concept, that whole philosophy? Well, the thing is, no one actually lives like that. Everybody lives like they believe in absolute truth because everyone judges. Everyone judges what's right and what's wrong. Hmm. And so the moment you do that, you set a standard. Hmm. And then you have to define who makes that standard, and uh, there you come up with truth. Yeah. And um, so that's the problem. Yeah. Is it, it really is? It's it's a fallacy, right? Right. Nobody says that they believe in absolute truth, but everyone believes that their truth is absolute. Yeah. 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 Um, and, and aligning with that, I guess, is the, the idea of faith. Is um, someone may say that, oh, I don't believe this, I don't believe that, I don't believe in God. Uh, I don't believe in faith, I believe in myself. Mm -hmm. Again, everybody lives uh, by faith. Uh, you have faith that that chair is going to hold you mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. You have faith that you're going to get home tonight when you go home to your family, that the car is going to work and you're not going to get in a wreck. Mm -hmm. So everybody lives by faith. The problem is, what is the object of your faith? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. So someone who would reject a biblical worldview, Someone who would reject the truth of the Bible, which of course we would believe that the Bible is absolute truth, right? The Bible right. is God's word and it is, it is our rule for life and for faith. But someone who rejects that, then what is their faith in? Well, ultimately their, their faith is, I can't speak for everybody, but I think probably most people, their faith is in themselves yeah. or their spouse or something other than God. But the problem with that is ultimately those things are going to fail you. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I think for a lot of people even watching this video, uh, to come to the realization that your faith is in your ability to reason, your ability to think. For so many people, right, in this in the age of reason, so many people say, no, I don't need faith because it goes against science or it goes against logic or whatever else, right? Well, right. no, you, then you're putting your faith in your ability to think or your ability to discern what's true, what's right or what's wrong, and, and you're uh. letting... You're elevating what I, we like to call it sin is you're elevating your opinion over God's opinion, which we would believe God's opinion is truth. Right. And our opinion is just opinion. Someone may say, I, I have faith only in what I can see or touch mm -hmm. or taste or like you say, the reason. Mm -hmm. Something may not seem reasonable. Well, I can point you to any number of things that we can't see, uh, feel, taste, touch that are real. And any number of things that appear unreasonable, uh, but nevertheless, they're real. And so reason is a faulty basis for living, too. Yeah, that's true. So why do you think, last question, why do you think people are so, even maybe people watching this video who would say, man, that's a good point. I've never really thought about it that way. Why do you think it's so hard for them to cross over to be a person of faith? you know, to trust in Jesus? What's, what's the hang up, do you think, for people? Well, I think we all like uh, to be secure and we're never more secure than when we think we're in control. Hmm. And so when we have to give up that control to hmm. something or someone else, that makes us insecure and we don't like that. Hmm. You're a doctor, so I bet, you, I bet you've seen this in the hospitals. I bet you've seen people are in a, in a place of crisis in their life and probably that's, that can either push them toward God or it could push them either further, even further away from God. Is that, is that something you've experienced? You've sure. Seen? And uh, you're right that it does push some people toward God, but some people get angry mm -hmm. at God because mm -hmm. God didn't meet their expectations. Mm -hmm. That's right. And so uh, they can't deal with that and uh, they don't want a God that they can't mold in their own image or doesn't meet their expectations. Yeah, yeah that's good. Well, there's a lot to think about here. And if you're watching this video, especially if you're, if you're struggling with understanding who Jesus is and accepting a biblical worldview, I encourage you to check out some of the links below and maybe even talk about this topic with a mentor or a friend. And you can check out some other resources on PursueGod.org. 
And if you go to pursuegod.org slash investigate, you can find all kinds of topics on this so that if, if you really truly want to pursue the God of the Bible, we can help you do that.